picking out the best GPU for your next gaming PC build, there are a lot of options to choose from. Be that NVIDIA's RTX 40 series, AMD's RX 7000 series, Intel Arc, or even last gen GPU options too. But so much choice can create confusion over which one you should actually buy, which is why today I'll be recommending the very best options based on my testing of all of the latest GPUs at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K in the most popular titles. Let's do this. Take your build to the next level with APACE's sleek RGB DDR5 memory. Available with a wide range of speeds and capacities, the APACER Panther lineup has a kit for everyone. A great looking aluminium alloy heatsink offers excellent heat dissipation, while Intel XMP 3.0 and AMD Expo certification means this RAM is a great fit for Team Red and Team Blue systems. Plus, RGB support in Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock software suites makes this an easy addition to any build. Learn more at the first link in the description below. I'm going to kick things off with a very brief overview into the state of the GPU market right now before walking through my favourite cards, working from least through to most expensive. Links to everything will be down in the description below for different regions and retailers too. Now the GPU market consists of three main players, AMD, Nvidia and Intel. Now Intel are newer to the market with their arc range of GPUs and as much as it's a promising start from Team Blue, they're just not there yet and performance, while it will be included in lots of the graphs today, just isn't quite there yet as far as earning my recommendation goes, meaning the focus for this video will be plainly on AMD and Nvidia. Now AMD have got two GPU lineups currently on offer, their latest RX 7000 series and last gen 6000 series. The 6000 series availability is getting weaker and weaker but there's some good options to look for and I'll talk you through those options as we go. Nvidia have their RTX 40 series and last gen RTX 30 series. It's a very similar case, one or two 30 series cards you may see still want to consider and I'll point those out as we progress through the video. On the Nvidia side the cards work right up from the base model 4060 through to the top end 4090 with TI and Super designating a bit more performance over non-TI and non-Super variants. AMD is a similar kind of style it ranges from RX 7600 through to RX 7900 with the XT or XTX designation indicating that bit more performance. You can see ordered lists of both Nvidia and AMD GPUs on your screen now from lowest power through to the highest power options. Now when it comes to the current gen of graphics cards you're looking at a starting price of about $279. This includes the RX 7600 and Nvidia RTX 4060. If you wish to go cheaper you can drop down to the last gen cards including the likes of the RX 6600 and RTX 3050 and 3060 which bring that pricing down. The top end card from AMD currently sits in at $1000 while Nvidia's super expensive and incredibly powerful 40 90 is around that $2,000 mark. Now this video does coincide roughly with Prime Day and Newegg's Fantas Tech sale, however the pricing today I'll be alluding to is what we're seeing in the market on the whole. And while you may find big savings during these key sale periods, let's be honest, GPU prices have been falling for some time anyway. Now if you're looking to spend as little money as possible and achieve solid 1080p performance, I'd point you towards AMD's RX 6600. You can commonly find this for under $200, which is extraordinary value value for the 1080p gaming performance it can deliver. The 6600 holds its own and is going to be more than good enough for the likes of Apex Legends, Fortnite. It's not a card that has a huge deal of future proofing, i.e. as more AAA titles come on board, opting for this card is going to become a challenge more quickly than some of the higher end options that have got more legs for future upcoming titles. Talking of more legs, what would I pick up if you want to spend that little bit more? You don't want to break through the $300 mark, but you want to be sitting at about the $250 price point. Well here is where where things get really interesting. Now on the Nvidia side, their cheapest current gen RTX 40 series GPU is of course the RTX 4060. Now you can commonly find 4060s for in the region of about $290, so a little bit more than the $250 that I really wanted to spend. AMD's RX 7600 is a little better, you can commonly find this for the region of about $250, $260, but it shares the same problem that the Nvidia 4060 has, and it's not actually price, it's video memory. Both of these GPUs only 
chip with 8 gigabytes of video memory. And while that's okay for 1080p gaming, at the price these cards go for, and with future 1440p titles in the back of my mind, they're hard GPUs to recommend. That's actually where the last generation RTX 3060 and RX 6750 XT both come in. Now these cards make recommendations at this price point a bit more tricky. If 1440p is something you've got in mind for the future, the extra video memory can be more helpful. But as you can see here in our side by side of 3060 versus 4060, the extra VRAM does come at the sacrifice of more performance. You can see areas in this comparison where the 3060's VRAM usage is higher than that of the 4060, showing where the 4060 is having to limit memory usage so it doesn't run out at the expense of performance. Now, the exact games you're playing are actually going to be the biggest driver between which card you should decide to buy. It also massively depends on what your appetite is for features like ray tracing and DLSS. And here's where things could get a bit controversial. Now, the 4060 pushes things further again in this regard. And while it didn't review well on the channel at all when it first landed, recent price drops make it an easier GPU to recommend if you're not bothered at all about 1440p gaming or about titles which may well become VRAM intensive in the future. Cards like the 6750 XT are undoubtedly a bit more future proof as as upcoming titles release it's got the VRAM capability to actually deal with it and in my mind the 6750 XT is the best choice from AMD at this price point. I would go for the 6750 XT if 1440p is on the menu now or into the future or the 4060 if you're only bothered about being confined to 1080p gaming. But what if you want to move up to the mid-range get gaming at 1440p without necessarily breaking the bank? Well for me there are three options you should consider. The first is the AMD RX 7700 XT. This is followed closely by the 7900 GRE and on the Nvidia side of the equation their RTX 4070. Now let's begin shall we with the 7700 XT. Now this can commonly be found for under $400 quite achievably. This is an amazing card for 1080p but especially 1440p gaming. With more power than the 6750 XT and 4060, heck it even beats out Nvidia's 4060 Ti which costs about the same as this GPU, if not slightly more, for the 16 gigabyte VRAM variant, and provides exceptional gaming performance at 1440p too. Now, when this card first launched, it wasn't at the top of my recommendations list, and in previous best GPU videos, I've instead opted to recommend the slightly more expensive RX 7800 XT. Now, the main difference between this and the 7800 XT is four gigs more VRAM and a bit more power. You also now see around a hundred dollars price difference between the two cards. This hasn't always been the case. Originally, the 7700 XT was only $50 less than its 7800 XT bigger brother. And when the price differential was smaller, the performance upside was worth it. I think now though, the 7700 XT is the better buy if I had to recommend an entry level 1440p GPU. The arrival of the 7900 GRE only further cements my recommendation when it comes to the 7800 XT. You see, this costs just $50 more than the 7800 XT. Now, when you compare the 7900 GRE directly against the 7700 XT, you can see the massive uplift in performance starts to help justify the round $150 price difference between the two GPUs. The performance graphs too in a wide range of titles make the GRE look like a no-brainer compared to what was already a really strong 7800 XT. In fact, for high-end 1440p gaming, this is what I'd recommend if you're not too concerned with ray tracing in particular and NVIDIA DLSS 3.5. Now the 4070 is what you're going to want to pick if those Nvidia features are important to you. And to be clear, the 4070 is a really great card, especially now that Nvidia have dropped the price to be more aligned with the GRE and to make way, of course, for their newer RTX 4070 Super. Now, those Nvidia set of features are not to be sniffed at. And if you're in a position where you're looking to create content too, Nvidia would be my clear recommendation. Things like drivers and software suites are still more stable on Nvidia. And in certain titles like Cyberpunk, the addition of DLSS just makes them playable. I actually watched a really interesting video from Hardware and Box recently, which I'll link in the cards now, which shows the really great progress of AMD when it comes to FSR 3, but the visual fidelity impact is still far greater than that of what you'll find on NVIDIA right now. So progress in the right direction for AMD, but this is still the best all-rounder, I would say, at 1440p. You just have to pay a bit of an NVIDIA tax for the pleasure. Now, moving through to the high end, and I think I'm going to remove a few GPUs from the table to make way for these three awesome graphics cards when it comes to the world of 4K gaming. Now, in my mind, these are the three you're going to want to focus on. I have, of course, picked up NVIDIA's RTX 4080 Super, the RTX 4070 Ti Super, and the AMD RX 7900 XT. Now, before 
talking about why these three cards make the most sense, let me talk you through why I've missed some of the other options that would also be available. The 4090 is excluded from this roundup because frankly, if you want the best of the best, it's what you're gonna buy anyway, and you probably didn't need me to tell you that. Love the 4090, and if you've got incredibly deep pockets, it's obviously the GPU that you're going to buy. AMD 7900 XTX isn't included on the basis that I think the 4080 Super makes a lot more sense, and I'll explain why in just a second. Well, the RTX 4070 Super is excluded on the basis it fits into the 1440p category, and I believe the 7900 GRE to be a better buy. For entry-level 4K gaming performance, the 4070 Ti Super is the GPU I would recommend. The 4070 Ti was previously one of the weaker GPUs in the 40 series lineup, but Nvidia refreshed it, made it slightly more price competitive, and added 4 gigabytes of VRAM, notching this up to 16 gigs. Now it's going to be more at home, I think, at the top end of 1440p, but again in our testing, entry-level 4K gaming is no problem. This is a GPU with plenty of power, plenty of cooling options available, and that you can find for around the $799 price tag. It goes in direct competition with AMD's RX 7900 XT. This has to be one of AMD's, again, most interesting cards from the whole 7000 series. When it first launched at an 899 MSRP, it was plainly terrible value for money. Like, there's no other way of putting it. Now you can find this GPU as low as about $650. Again, prices change to check out latest options down below for UK, US, and other regions. Now this delivers you a staggering 20 gigabytes of VRAM. That's four gigs more than you'll find on the 70 Ti Super. Though to be honest, I'm not necessarily sure you need it. It may come in handy in the future, as I say, as those games become more VRAM demanding. So it's not a bad thing to have, but I wouldn't necessarily buy this card over the 4070 Ti Super on VRAM alone. Again, the Nvidia GPU wins out in titles where DLSS and ray tracing are more prominent. And at the higher end of the market, where you're probably spending, what, two, two and a half thousand dollars on a build that includes a card like this, if you've also gone for a high-end case and all the other trimmings, the inclusion of those Nvidia-specific features is a big winner for me. And that's the same reason, really, that the 4080 Super wins out against the RX 7900 XTX for my mainstream 4K recommendation. Now, the 4080 Super, forget the ray tracing and the DLSS for a second, is still a superb GPU and delivers absolutely exceptional performance at 1440p, but especially 4K. You're going to be looking at 60 FPS and above in all those RPG games at that top end resolution, and you're even going to touch towards that triple digit frame rate mark in certain titles as well at that top end 4K high settings marker. The 4080 Super is very power efficient, there's loads of coolers to choose from, and while pricing has stayed more constant at that $999 mark against the 7900 XTX, I genuinely believe it to be the better option. Nvidia have done a great job refreshing their cards with the Super Upgrade, and while we've seen midlife upgrades fail miserably in the case of Intel's 14th generation lineup, when it comes to Nvidia, they seem to have got the balance just right. I'll leave my favorite GPU recommendations today down linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more PC building, PC component, and hardware fun, get subscribed. What are you waiting for? We're well over that 200,000 mark now, which feels frankly incredible. So thank you all for your continued support. Let me know if you agree with my recommendations in the comments below. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. I'm going to go and use this 4080 Super. Yeah, baby, ray tracing.